What is going on guys, my name is AK back again with another YouTube video. Now in today's video, I'm bringing you my 10 quick tips that I guarantee are going to make you a better Call of Duty player. So there's real quick little things that you can add in your gameplay straight away. You don't even actually have to like spend much time practicing these or working on these. Just put them into your gameplay, start doing them, and I guarantee you'll see some good results quite quickly. So without wasting any more of your time, let's get straight into it. So my tip number one here is for people that use an AR or uh, or people that tend to swap to their secondary while they're sprinting um, It is what you want to do is you want to change weapons before you actually start mantling So uh, let me just show you what I mean by this So uh, let's start here and uh, say we want to jump onto the top tank to start watching over the map We jump with the pistol and then swap to the AR and we'll see how long that takes That's how quick it is You see there's quite a lot of time that we're at the top where we're actually swapping over the weapons here before we can actually start shooting now, if we change that and instead run up and swap our weapons just before, uh, we can jump straight up and then start shooting even quicker. So what you're going to do is basically before you mantle on things, make sure that you've swapped weapons first uh, so that when you uh, actually finish the mantle, you can shoot a lot quicker as opposed to having to jump up and then, uh, and then try and swap weapons and then shoot a bit later. So swap weapons before mantling. Okay, so point number two is a sort of a way of outsmarting your uh, your opponent. So um, think of a, a hypothetical situation. I don't have anyone else uh, online at the moment that could help demonstrate this, but uh, just think of an example. Say there was a player here uh, and you are standing uh, sort of around here. I'll throw a trophy sort of where we'll be standing and there's a player here. Uh, they're not looking and they start running this way and you shoot them in the side. Now, if you're here and, uh, and you've shot that player and they've run across there, uh, a lot of people would sort of then spin and try and look this way thinking that that's where they're going to push. They ran that way. They'll, uh, they'll sort of run around. Uh, by the way, this is just an example situation. Uh, this sort of works in a lot of uh, a lot of places. But essentially, what you're going to do is you're actually going to wait, and uh, they run past, and then you pre-aim back here because a very common thing that people do in this game is they'll run this way, expecting you to change, then run back and try and sort of uh, like chal it backwards. Uh, so sort of like challenge the gunfight uh, from from where they were taking damage, expecting you to have turned this way, and then getting uh, an easy shot in their side. So what I always do is if you do that, and uh, and someone runs off, just hold that angle for two seconds doesn't have to be long just hold the angle and uh, expect to push back because a lot of people do it and uh, you'll be surprised if you actually watch my gameplays in my streams how often i do this and uh, and how many kills this actually gets you so uh, if people are weak and they run around expect them to reach out so uh, hold the pre-aim for just a couple seconds because they're not gonna uh, in the time that it takes you to pre-aim this they're not gonna have run around and shot you in the side so just take the few seconds to pre-aim here if they're not there then fair enough turn and start looking elsewhere so point number three, now this is going to be a very big one that's actually going to help improve your gameplay and that is not sort of openly challenging everything and instead shoulder peeking. So if you don't know what shoulder peeking is, it's just sort of stepping sideways and uh, and peeking things but without actually fully uh, throwing your body out in the middle uh, letting you get shot. So you can shoulder peek quite a lot of things, just sort of dip in and out and uh, it's actually hard for, uh, for people to kill you there. They only see you flash up on their screen sort of a, a very sort of a small angle. So it's actually really hard for them to kill you but it gives you information and uh, allows you to see the enemy and then decide whether you want to challenge it or whether uh, because there's someone set up on a tight head glitch instead you'll push another route or something like that but shoulder peeking everything is uh, is very helpful now my next point is about speeding up reloading so i just want to uh, do a quick little thing so i'm going to shoot the gun uh, and then i'm going to reload and i'm not going to do anything and i'm going to see how long it takes to shoot the gun again So that's how long it takes to shoot. Uh, bear in mind, I'm holding the trigger uh, while I was doing that. Um, but now, uh, the uh, the quicker way to do it is actually to shoot and then reload. And the moment you see the 40 on the mag, uh, as you can see in the in the bottom corner, I'll bring that up uh, a little bit bigger on the screen. The moment you see that turn to 40, uh, double press uh, Y or whatever your um, uh, triangle if you're on PS, uh, and then just sort of, uh, you know what it does, like the swap the weapon and then swap it back. And what this actually does is it actually decreases the amount of time between uh, having reloaded and being able to shoot again. So it's a really uh, quick trick. If you just get used to doing that, so if you shoot reload uh, and then the moment you actually uh, are going to need to shoot just press yy and then uh, aim down sight it's actually quite good for actually um sort of like focusing up getting a bit of aim assist uh, as well so make sure that you do the yy and uh, you use that to help you reload even quicker my next point is for those of you that always get caught stunning and nading and not having your weapon up now uh, this is a really cool trick and uh, it takes a little bit of time to sort of uh, just get used to it but it's fairly quick and that is uh, learning the timings on uh, on grenades and flashbangs essentially how long it takes uh, from pressing the button to them actually being able to throw and then using that to sort of judge uh, nades behind walls so you can you can start the nade behind the wall peek it and then uh, and then pop back and doing things like that uh, same with stuns there are there are a bit quicker stuns um, but sort of learning the timings of them um, nades are probably what you 
you want to learn because they are the ones that take the longest and learning that so that you only have to essentially do a shoulder peek and just uh, use that to throw the nade uh, sort of as efficiently as possible and, uh, and not expose yourself because if you're throwing the nade in the middle of here uh, you're very easy to shoot whereas if you're behind here and you peek and throw the nade uh, it's very small sort of time for them to kill you and uh, you still essentially get the same thing out of it you manage to throw a nade at them so yeah learn the nade timings that should be very helpful so continuing on my point of nades and stuns, uh, you're going to want to actually use these as information. Uh, a lot of the pros you'll see is, uh, is they, don't, they don't use their stuns and nades really to try and get kills. Uh, maybe, maybe nades they do, but uh, a lot of people run tack mask or flak, uh, either or, so uh, the chance that it's going to be useful is only 50% really. Um, so being able to use them for information is actually a lot more uh, effective. So for instance, imagine it's S&D, you've managed to sneak into the middle bit of the map. You don't know if there's a player there in lights. Uh, you've got an AR, so uh, challenging there is probably not uh, the best uh, thing to do. You don't want to really jump through that window and have to challenge that because uh, that's kind of a, a gunfight that is very sub-heavy if they have a sub. Uh, but instead, you throw the nade in there and then you use the stun or the nade uh, to instead play the information that you can then call out to your teammates. Using this in addition to the shoulder peek, for instance, uh, a nade round a wall like that to test if there's someone in the corner, is a really good actually way of, uh, of, of using them and utilizing them. You throw the nade round, you wait for the information, and then you can uh, slide out and, uh, and try and pick up the kill if there's anything there. If not, you know you can push up and, uh, and your, sort of, uh, your route is clear. And as well as being used as information, if they're not running the uh, the corresponding um, attack or flak, depending on what you're using, it also makes them a lot easier to kill. Either they're a lot weaker or they're blind. So uh, either way, it's going to help you in a gunfight. So yeah, definitely something that you should be adding to your gameplay. My next point is another one for those of you that play main AR and even sub to an extent, and that stop sprinting everywhere. Uh, you see a lot of people that just uh, they live their whole life sprinting around the map. They never pre-aim anything and have to rely on instant reactions actually to be able to get uh, kills. But that is not an effective way of doing it. And if you run into someone who's set up in a pre-aim, uh, you're never going to manage to kill them. So my, uh, my next point is making sure that you uh, you slow down, you play a bit slower, uh, you slide cancel, you pre-aim things and, uh, and don't get caught sprinting everywhere. Now, for people that have played pubs a lot, uh, they, they don't know really how to uh, how to stop doing this. They do sprint everywhere just because the nature of pubs is you can probably rely on your, your fast reaction speed to get kills. But in a competitive environment, there's no way that um, sprinting everywhere is going to actually uh, be able to get you lots of kills. So you're going to have to find different ways uh, to sort of pre-aim things and just slow down your gameplay. I mean, don't never sprint anywhere, uh, but anywhere there potentially might be a player, you want to pre-aim it first. And then if it's clear, you can then sprint and, uh, and use your movement to... Uh, to push through. Now it wouldn't be a tips and tricks video without me mentioning slide cancelling so uh, that is something that you're definitely going to want to add to your gameplay. Um, so if you don't know what it is, uh, if you're a pubs player that maybe uh, isn't isn't too familiar with the competitive scene, slide cancelling is uh, pretty self-explanatory. You start the slide and then you cancel and uh, and then you, or you cancel the slide by either uh, pressing the, um, the slide button again, you can press it once and then twice to cancel or uh, if you're using auto attack sprint you can uh, slide and then aim down sight to cancel it too. And uh, really if you watch the pro players you'll see that everything they challenge uh, they slide cancel uh, because of uh, a few reasons one it makes you a lot harder to kill it throws off the auto aim for the enemies uh, and also it makes use of uh, something called cameraing or or um, messing up people's uh, in-game cameras which essentially means you can see them before they can see you for example, if I was to come around this corner and slide cancel uh, and there was someone on the top plat, I mean, uh, provided they hadn't seen me already pushing up, uh, I could slide around and I would see them uh, a very small uh, sort of bit of time before they can see me. But again, in a competitive game where uh, sort of milliseconds are everything, being able to see them that little bit quicker will actually help you win quite a few gunfights. So whenever you challenge something, whenever you pick something, uh, slide cancel it. Even if you sort of do that as a, uh, a sort of an alternate um, shoulder peek, if you sort of slide cancel out and then, uh, and then push back, you're actually uh, quite hard to see because by the time they see you on uh, their screen, you'll already sort of be moving back that way. So definitely start slide cancelling if you haven't already. So my next point goes for everyone, and this is if you're a sub and there's an AR on the floor, pick it up. And vice versa, if you're an AR and there's a sub on the floor, pick it up. Now, uh, the M4 is pretty overpowered at the moment, but that still doesn't mean that it beats the AK-74U at all ranges. At close range, the AK-74U will still kill an XM4 uh, in most scenarios, provided you don't get a few lucky uh, hipfire headshots. But uh, again, if you're, uh, if you're an AK-74U and there's an M4 on the ground, pick it up, because there are a lot of ranges that the M4 will always beat uh, an AK-74U. So I guess my piece of advice in this tip is to always pick up uh, the other guns so that you will have both utility at close and long range in game. 
For instance, say you're set up in P3 here and you're watching the front with an AR and someone calls out that there's someone in tools, you can swap to your SMG uh, and then watch the whole of the tools and win the close range gunfight here and the long range gunfight here. It's also very confusing for the other team if they're sort of tracking uh, who's using what weapon because they'll see you constantly with a sub and AR. They'll never know uh, at what distance they should be challenging you. So definitely something to do. And uh, this also goes in the future if snipers come back to S&D. Uh, at the moment, they're, uh, they're GA. They're not in the official rule set. Uh, but when snipers do come back, make sure that if you have a teammate that uses one and they die, uh, that you're picking that up because they do add a lot of utility uh, sort of to your, uh, your loadout. And last but not least, my 10th and final tip for uh, Call of Duty Competitive is don't overpeak the bomb. So it takes seven and a half seconds to defuse the bomb. So if you're checking the bomb every three seconds, you're putting yourself in uh, a situation where you could possibly get killed a lot more than you actually need to. So uh, say um, at 20 seconds, we've seen that there's no one on the bomb. That means you do not have to check the bomb until 12.5 seconds. You don't have to then peek it out again and then again and essentially keep putting yourselves in these positions where you can get shot by the other team uh, the, the less uh, time that you've got eyes on the bomb generally the safer it is for you in the round that being said don't completely neglect uh, checking the bomb you do want to check the bomb uh, just because of uh, the fact that people can ninja defuse and uh, people will quite quickly realize if uh, if you play one round and they never see you check the bomb next time they're going to think okay this guy doesn't check the bomb let's ninja defuse it and uh, and see if we can get a round or two by doing that so definitely do check the bomb but don't overpeak it don't give them more opportunity to kill you than uh, than you have to also one quick little note on garrison that uh, a lot of people uh, i know actually <laughs> might not realize but you can actually blow up uh, the uh, the containers on the bomb so say say you're up on the top tank for instance uh, and your teammate has planted it for the wrong side of the bomb uh, so that it's not actually visible say they planted it down for the back side of the bomb and you think there's someone on there these red barrels if you shoot them actually blow up and do uh, a lot of damage so if there's anyone that is defusing the bomb uh, you can use that red barrel as a as sort of a, a free kill on anyone that's on the bomb i think even with flak jacket that definitely kills them so yeah definitely some utility on the map that uh, you want to be using if you're not already but that about wraps up my top 10 tips for competitive Call of Duty so far. As I think of more and uh, I add them to my list, there might be uh, new episodes of this coming hopefully very soon. Drop any tips that you'd like to use down in the comment section below. And if I end up featuring them in my next episode, I'll give you a shout out. So with that said and done, thanks a lot for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you found any of the tips helpful. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.